people of the internet, welcome to the second Gamescom dev stream. My name is Phil and I'm joined by Matthias. Hello, Matthias, my friend. Hello. Hello, everyone. Matthias is uh, the lonely creator, one could say, of Chained Echoes, a upcoming 16-bit pixel RPG in SNES style with an amazing combat system and a unique twist to it. And you will see that it's actually absolutely insane what Matthias is doing, that Chained Echoes will be such a big project and it's crazy to see one person alone <laughs> with the help of a composer of course uh achieve this but before we start matthias what is your background is it your first game what's your coding background what's your art background it's my first game yeah um i'm actually a communication designer um what does a communication designer do yeah, that's. Uh, I'm, I'm, I was working as a motion designer. I was doing an animations. Uh, I was working in videos, uh, producing trailers and uh, such uh, s stuff before everything regarding coding and uh, such. Uh, I had to learn. What was your intention using Kickstarter, and what did you actually achieve with it? Well, um, as I said, I was working parallel to my job uh, on this uh, game, and I. I did not have much time. I could only work in the evenings or in the weekends. And since this is an uh, RPG, it has a lot of content and uh, it takes a while to finish. And when I, when I, if I would have done it uh, like beside my job, I probably would work 10 years or so on it. So I decided I need to go, uh, I, I have to go full time uh, on this game. Otherwise I will never complete it. Mm -hmm. And for this, I, uh, well, needed money. <laughs> okay, so and the Kickstarter turned out to be a great success, right? Yes. Was... It, it, uh, you exceeded the funding goal, if I remember correctly? Yes. Crazy. So people seem yeah. to be interested in Chain Echoes. I think that's the perfect moment for us today to show the people out there that are currently watching uh, what you have been working on. I've uh, just seen the Kickstarter trailer and we've talked about it and comparing it to the at least the character art and the UI art now to the version that's in the pre-alpha you've come a long way it shows it's looking amazing yeah it was, uh, watching a trailer it's, it's like totally oversaturated like the colors are all over the place I think they are a little better now still not perfect but uh, definitely better than they were one and a half year ago I don't current. think you have to be hard on yourself because it was kind of its own style when you especially if you look at screenshots I think you can see that uh, it's it's more of a style change than it's like a correction of faults. You you I feel yeah. like you have narrowed down what the art style is going to be. Let's let's say that. <laughs> <laughs> you can spin it into a compliment, and I feel like you need to be better at accepting compliments because be uh, prepared for the next one and a half hours. I'm going to make some more compliments, and you have to deal with it. I know. Okay, this continent has been uh, in a war for like phew, 150 uh, years, I think. And in this time, uh, all the all the te technological process has basically stopped there. The the, the people the, the people have no money for development for anything almost since being so long in a war. While all all nations outside outside of Valanus are developing uh, airships, developing this Max and so on. And uh, since mechs are used for battle and for war, there's a need for them in Valandis. So you will find some in Valandis, but they are rather rare. Only every country only has a, a few of them. But uh, that's how it happens that, that you have this really medieval looking world and this uh, higher technology stuff. I love the PlayStation era of uh, JRPGs, especially. Um, so I think there are a lot of um, influences from this era, as well as the SNES era, as well as uh, other eras. But I think PlayStation and Super Nintendo uh, had the biggest, biggest influences from uh, me on me. And when it comes to specific games, uh, you just mentioned Secret of Mana and Final Fantasy. Are those your influences or inspirations? Yeah, like those, Suicune 2 is an uh, inspiration, Xenogears, which has Max as well, <laughs> and Xenoblade or yeah, Dark Souls as well in some way. I have to be honest with you, I've, except for Dark Souls, I've played none of the mentioned titles. No Final Fantasy, no Xenoblade, no Secret of Mana, 
I've played nothing of those. That's why I'm especially amazed the chained echoes hooked me. Uh -huh. I mean, you've you've read my direct feedback. Once I finished the demo, I was totally yeah. I was totally in love, and that's weird because it's not my style uh, style uh, style of game. Same goes for Crosscode. I would have never touched Crosscode, but then I gave it a chance and played it, and I really fell in love and played the whole 40 hour story experience plus a lot of the side stuff. So I think it's a quality. It's um. It's kind of cool proof for quality that this game is able to pull me in like this. In terms of basic combat system, it's pretty simple. You have four characters. Um, they have different moves. Basically, two, the two biggest things you need to watch out for is health and uh, TP. What, what is the, does the TP stand for? Uh, technical points. Technical, technical points. points. Basically, mana, you can imagine. Yeah. Um, TP is used to use the skills. Um, TP yeah. can be replenished by items and skills as well as health, as health points and that's as far as basic combat goes and when it yes. gets a bit more complex uh, you can see the bar in the uh, top left corner that's the overdrive bar so basically every action you do if it's an attack or a skill will drive this bar further into the green area what does the green area do? That's the, uh, it gets the party into the overdrive mode. It basically represents how the party is doing battle, how the synergy is between the party members, how, um, how, how, how warmed up are they. And if you are in this green area, um, you get a special bony, like uh, you deal more damage, you, can, you get less damage dealt by the enemy, and most importantly, uh, your skills cost only half because uh, normally the costs are quite uh, expensive. I think you have one, uh, like 100 TP and a normal skill costs like 25, 30 TP or something. So you could you use it only th three times or so in battle. Except for when being in overdrive, it's halved, so uh, you can really use it a lot uh, more. Mm -hmm. And that's quite important. So the aim of the battle sim system is basically to have this little white cursor there uh, always be in the green area. Yeah, now you can see the synergy. We have basically yeah. a spell that's called Earth Drums, and in the top left corner there is the symbol of a spell displayed. If you use a, sim uh, a spell of this kind, the um, marker will go to the left backwards, and so you're incentivized as a player to always keep in the keep the marker in the green zone, and you can achieve that by actually using the displayed spells. So right. the you can if you want a certain spell but the symbol is not displayed you kind of and and you really want to use it you kind of have a trade-off in the end which means that combat gets a bit more finicky a bit more tricky because there's another notion to it so now we can use the earth drums and the marker will go to the left and now we have yeah, way because... more freedom to do whatever we want for the next few turns right because otherwise if you don't do anything that uh, puts a uh, cursor back to the left you will end up in that red area there and that's bad because uh, first you uh, you have to pay a normal price for your skills but uh, what's worse is that uh, all enemies deal a lot more damage to you so you especially against bosses you won't survive pretty long so uh, you've got to stay out of this red area and stay within the green area of this bar so let me see we also of course uh, have st different status effects uh, you can see them in the bottom right corner displayed next to the characters i just used a healing aura which will regenerate health points over the next few rounds whenever a character is activated um, we also have debuffs one of them is the arms break i can use it on this goblin soldier here and it will basically um, break his attack, so his attacks will be his physical attacks will be a bit slower. Now we can see a. I would have loved to use the poetic march, which is basically an uh, increase for attack and magic for all our party members. But uh, as you can see, the top right, it would put me out of overdrive, so it, it would not be a wise thing to use it now. Maybe keep it for the next round. So. Yeah, well, we have the healing aura going. We could use uh, TB generation, so it will just activate that. And this does not override the existing status effects. It will just add. So now you can see in the bottom right, it will change between the healing aura and the TP aura. But I'm super happy to see um, the feedback regarding the demo, because when I played uh, this version like two or three weeks ago, I thought, damn, Indie Arena is going to love those people. People out there are going to love getting their hands on it. And it held true.
So far, what have you gathered from people playing the game? Yeah, most of them really enjoyed it. Uh, compliments so far, especially for the, for the uh, graphics, for the music, and for the overdrive. What do you mean, most of the people? There were people that hated it. Uh, you, but here, you can tell me. <laughs> I will find them. So I will. I will change their mind. It's no problem. <laughs> there will be a lot of stuff to do in uh, the actual game. There will be a lot of uh, stuff to upgrade. You will have your characters, which have. Uh, different equipment slot. They uh, have a lot of skills to uh, learn: active skills, passive skills. You have uh, gems. You will find everywhere crystal sources, which uh, give weapons and equipment uh, passive, uh, uh, passive abilities. And then you also have your max. Every character has a, sl a second slot to him, uh, where you can basically add t a member for tag team. And for Glenn, we added the other character we just encountered in the cave that joined our party and when we switched him out only not only does the overdrive meter move back which means that you're incentivized to regularly um, switch them out you're not penalized in other uh, rpgs when there's a system to change out stuff you're penalized and then the turn is over but here you change out the character the overdrive moves back and then you're actually allowed to attack in the same turn and i i must say that feels super satisfying, not to be punished. When I was thinking about the system, I was uh, remembering uh, other games that had like character switching uh, systems. And often, I, I, most of the time, I did not really use them. I wondered why. And there were certain reasons, uh, like, like, like for example, what you said, that you, you get punished, like, like your um, turn is over and uh, you have to wait. Like that uh, doesn't feel very good most of the time. And another thing is that you often can switch between... Um, uh, you can choose any party member outside of battle to uh, uh, switch with. Uh, while here in Chained Echoes you always have only one partner. You are... Um, oh, now you're in a danger zone. Yes, I'm trying to move back. My whole party is slowly dying. I'm not sure what's happening. <laughs> but we're easy. Two spells and we're safely back. Yeah, you're back in overdrive, that's it. Um, well, you basically, you have uh, only one choice. You, uh, you have only one partner, and you can only uh, uh, switch with him. So it's, it's, it makes the uh, decision easier. Help me, save me from this monstrosity. I failed to defeat it, and now it is out to get me. Where? There's nothing here. Think, think me crazy, huh? You're no different from the others. Be gone, and let me be alone with my troubles. Okay. Never mind. But something tells me I have to go to the left. Because I suddenly you, experience. can fight a windmill? This is usually the part where I would ask you, Matthias, what is going <laughs> on with your head? Why am I fighting windmills? Mimics? What are they supposed to be? What's up? Yeah, it's a mimic. Uh, at this time, not a treasure chest, but something different. My friends, we've reached a critical point in the game. This, yeah. is, the, this is the skill check. It just, it, it, I think it was, for me personally, it was the hardest fight to figure out. So we, as you've seen, we've just uh, found a carrot in Basil and we just kind of followed and stalked that carrot back to his friends. And now we've encountered a whole gang of living and breathing creatures. Vegetables, I guess. Yeah. So, so here's the tactic. Always go for the broccoli first. <laughs> it's too strong. The reason for that is the broccoli can heal the gang. Exactly like that, using the bro heal. And that's actually a pretty st strong spell, but once it's gone, uh, it's not so easy to die anymore, but still possible. <laughs> it's easily possible. <laughs> oh boy. And especially because you have like five enemies, the uh, overdrift bar is going pretty fast uh, to the right. So you have to look out for that as well. So now, let's think tactical. I can't do anything besides defending. So now I... No, I can't do anything. She died. I can't do anything. I'm... Ah, uh, I need to defend now, right? It looks bad. If you... if you Defend is only the last option. So uh, it looks rather bad. I think it will be hard. Ah, let's go for defend. Okay. Yeah. Um, so... Oh, now uh, if, you, if, if you're... Oh, paralyzed. Oh. Otherwise, you could have switched with her, but... Uh, oh. And danger again. So... Let's see. Aye, aye, I aye. got this attack. 
which is a AOE attack. Wait a second, this one. This witch thing might be a option. And using decoy. To draw Glenn, attention away, but... Glenn has... Glenn has, uh, has probably a lot of HP. So, or does he? Yeah, let's come on. Let's, let's change him and then we... But we could use the whirlwind attack, which is like AOE damage and hope how, that how it much, kills the, how, yeah, the mushroom. How much HP? Ah, okay. Yeah, but yeah, yeah try Let's it. try it. I hope the mushroom dies. But it's just like Go 30. Yeah, he does. Okay, okay, okay. So now... Let's see, is there someone still infected with poison? Yeah, Cornelia is. So now I can use Pandemic. The poison spreads. Both of them are infected. He starts attacking, gets damaged by poison, still survives. <laughs> Pepper gets damaged, still survives, but that's cool because now I can use Whirlwind and they are both done easily. Yeah, I believed in you from the beginning. I knew you Yeah, yeah, you sure, would you trusted me, of course, of course. That's why you baited me into letting the girl die, the magician die. Uh, I now, might be not. I might be not the player, best player at my own game. I'm just glad I played it before. <laughs> I'm experienced enough now to kind of know what's going on. But I think this perfectly shows the synergy of the game. How you're incentivized to do certain things. How sometimes the system is playing in your hand. Sometimes it's working against you. And I think it's it's a perfect addition. That's what. Yeah. Even though I fought this boss four times now, the the fight itself still is entertaining and it's fresh because of the system mm. actually we haven't talked to the village elder yet i mean we're here to to yeah. slay a beast yeah. and we should we go to the village elder, but we didn't do it at all no we're not doing anything story uh relevant and i think yes. then we have a decision to make either to go for the yak or for the final boss of the game and i'm kind of rooting for the yak now to be honest because it's <laughs> a more challenging fight but uh, yes you can try it at least maybe the fight will be very fast over so let's go get that weapon first, just to make sure we get the extra 10 or 20 damage in. Because apparently we will need it for the Yak fight. You run past by. Wait, what? You haven't uh, explored it yet. What do you mean? L look at the cliffs. Exact, uh, look. Uh, yeah, I see look. something in there and I need to get up here somehow. No, yes. oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I see what you're doing. Okay. <laughs> so... I need to get up there somehow. But wait, isn't like, this the entrance no. to the cave? Yeah. To the left, yes. You were already right. The what? Cliff. Wait. That's the way up. Oh my god, I was standing right in front of it. Yes, I was talking was... about the thing on the left, the one that goes straight uh -huh. into the water, the white you one. Were all, <laughs> you even had the uh, 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 climbing animation on her. What? And I was totally looking to the left and did not see it. Oh boy. That sometimes happens. All right. You keep telling me about how hard the young fight is and how it's harder than the final <laughs> boss fight. And now you just want to go, let me go in. I'm not sure what's funnier, that's why uh, I'm struggling with myself <laughs> what to tell you. Oh boy. We can tell them that in the first demo build we've done, there was actually a bug that you were not allowed to die no. <laughs> at all. <laughs> it, was, it was hard mode and I was like, wow, this is amazing. I just finished the demo and my colleague was, yeah, I died to the Shashlik and I couldn't keep playing. What was wrong? Oh, there he is. That Yak seems super strong. Okay. We shouldn't fight it until we're prepared. <laughs> I've done nothing but preparation. A rock in front as well, so you can poison directly. Mm. In the Good call, yeah. Let's do that. Rob. That, that's what's called backseat gaming, right? <laughs> no, that's what's called we have 15 minutes and we need to do this the first time. So, arms break. Then poison. Yes. Easy, yes. easy, easy, easy. But the thing is, using arm brakes now brings me out of overdrive. So I must use decoy and keep him yeah. in for another turn. That's so weird, because right now, the turn before that, I thought, okay, put in Glenn for one turn, use this one ability, and then put him out and get the other girl in. But now, because of the overdrive mechanics, the whole game plan changes, and I have to fight against the overdrive mechanic as well as the enemy. That's what I think yes, that makes need, it so amazing. Ad ad adapt. Adapt exactly. to the circumstances. Nice. So we are equipped. Hello. Pang. Almost dead. Amazing. You. Oh, no, no, no. I forgot to look at the overdrive button. No, don't give me. Oh. Ah, danger. Danger. Arms break. Take this. 
Oh, no. Oh, God. What do you mean? I, I yeah. I hope what? he's not using stomp or anything. Why would he? Doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm using TP. Uh, I need to get some technical but... points. Back. Oh, you're lucky. Did it miss? Glenn... All other other skills would have killed Glenn. <laughs> so how I could use an item right here. Take this. And I mean, it wouldn't have been so bad. I still got two angel wings. I still have a... Oh my god. <laughs> and he's back to no health again. I still have so much um, so much stuff I could use. I have the revive skill. I have the angel wings. I yeah. think we're pretty much good to go, go. Go for it. Yeah, I'm just making sure Glenn doesn't die with the next attack. And then I'm straight yeah. up just putting in some damage. Because the Yak is almost dead, my friend. Yes. <sighs> Seems good, nice. seems good. Wait, skill, what do I have? Cross slash, get it in. And even overdrive at the end. Nice. <laughs> you did it. I love the jingle, the victory jingle. It's amazing. Thank you for having me here. It was uh, was a lot of fun. It's, uh, it's the first time I think I'm uh, really... Uh, attending a stream where someone plays the game so uh, like live I have been in the chat I think once uh, mm -hmm. but uh, it's it's really nice to to see uh, how, how, how other people play the game and uh, fun to watch I think I, the first time I, I watched a stream I was I was looking like oh my god please no bug please no bug please no bug <laughs> Yesterday I played with uh, the guys of Fesper and they have exactly the same perspective as you. It's the first game they're making, yeah. their first contact with Twitch, and exactly the same. The first time playing a game, most of the time they feel super happy that the work they've put into something is finally recognized and shown and enjoyed by others. But on the other hand, they're full of fear that something might break and go horribly wrong. Yeah. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, please wishlist Chain Echoes on Steam. Please follow Matthias on Twitter. I hope you're having a lovely Gamescom and a lovely evening. I hope you're having a great weekend and we will see each other again in the future. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.